This FAQ Monday is brought to you by Vikings War of Clans. And welcome to another FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff. And if you have a question, feel free to leave them on down below or go on over to my Ask FM account thing and we'll get you sorted out eventually. It's a long line, but if you're patient, we may answer your question or just give a snarky answer. Or I'll just say bacon. Maybe because bacon's really the answer to everything, right? First question! Have you had to deal with overzealous fans? Um... No, not really. Uh, at this last year's uh, NAM back in January, um, there was a guy who kissed my beard out of nowhere. Like he came, he saw me, and he kissed my beard. I thought, eh, it's a little much. Um, there was a guy that uh, walked up on us, uh, like on me, Jared, Rob Scallon, and Rabia talking, and he said, he shouted and exclaimed, I am going to soil myself for the intense purposes. He didn't, he used a different word than soil, but he said, I'm going to soil myself. And I couldn't help but just instantly say, please don't do that. But other than that, no, nah, man, the fans are always cool. Um, I think if they're a fan of this channel or the genre or gear or anything like that, generally, you guys are really, really respectful, and it never gets, I don't know, I never find myself going, oh, that's too much, don't talk to me, or anything like that. Like, it's all good, it's just one big hang, man. It's, uh, we're all on the same team, we're all just trying to get decent guitar tones and, and write nasty riffs, right? What is the best guitar you have ever played? Um, I don't know if I could narrow it down to just one. However, a recent one, is a good friend of mine, Jason Burns. He actually ordered a custom Paul Reed Smith. And we're talking, he flew over to Maryland and he knocked on the wood with Paul Reed Smith, the man. And they chose the wood. He got to choose the wood for his guitar. And this is like a step above the wood library guitar is what I'm talking. It's like a $12,000 guitar. And he flew over to Maryland, chose the wood, spent two days at the factory choosing everything. Um, he even made an, a little inlay, uh, a logo for himself that's on the back of the neck heel and it's really tastefully done. And the finish is Dragon's Breath. I'm gonna screw this up. It's Dragon's Breath, Dragon Fire. I'm gonna, I don't even, I'll, I'll post information here somewhere. Uh, this is the guitar though. And when you play this guitar, the entire thing resonates as one. And it's really hard for me to describe to you guys just what is so special about this guitar, but the notes just leap off of this thing in a way that I have rarely experienced. And the craftsmanship that went into that guitar is something you just don't see or get to play anymore. That is really stands out for me as like one of the ultimate guitars I have ever played. Um, also, I've played a Mayonez that was incredible. Um, Regius. Um, old Fenders. I've played a 70s Gibson Les Paul Custom in Wine Red that was just incredible. I could go on and on, but yeah, for right now, the, uh, the Paul Reed Smith that I just mentioned. Uh, yeah, I'll link down below to it. Thoughts on Chevelle? I saw Chevelle when their first major label record came out, uh, when they had The Red was out and stuff like that. This is like a decade ago, if not more. And they were at a radio station show and it was a weird show. It was, Chevelle was the opener and then it was Linkin Park and then it was Bad Religion and then AFI or something like that. It was, it was a little weird and Chevelle, I didn't really know who Chevelle were. I didn't know anything about them. And I was blown away by how huge they sounded for a three piece. I mean, they sounded incredible. And ever since then, I've kind of just casually listened to their albums. I really like their albums. They sound great. Pete's a great singer, great guitarist, songwriter. All those dudes are awesome. I wouldn't say I'm a Chevelle super fan, but I really respect and appreciate what they do. And uh, I love how low the bass player plays his stuff. 
And uh, I love the fact that they just found guitars that they really love because I watched the gear rundowns, like the bass player likes way out of production Ibanez basses and things like that. I love that about the band. They're super into gear. So uh, yeah, Chevelle, awesome. Recent DNA studies claim that one out of every 30 people are a descendant of the Vikings. That means on the viewers and the subscribers of this channel, there's almost 9,000 descendants of Vikings. So in the name of Odin, I encourage you to join me and 20 million other Vikings in the most epic battle of the month on mobile. Awaken your inner Viking and using the links down below in the description, you will get 200 gold initial protection shield and your place in Valhalla. Find me there by the name Riffs and Beards. Mesa or Orange 212? Um, both. I own both. And here's the thing about the two different cabinets. Now, I will say those two cabs, if you're gonna pick either one, you're gonna come out on top picking either one of those 212 cabs. Mesa Boogie amps sound best through Mesa Boogie cabinets. Orange sound best through orange cabinets, in my experience. Um, the orange is gonna be a little smoother on the top end and the mid range is gonna sit back a little bit, not scooped, but the, the hump in the upper mids is gonna be um, not as pronounced. It's not as honky as the Mesa, but that makes sense that the Mesa is a little bit more honky because things like, you know, it's a rectifier 212 and the rectifier is a pretty scooped amp. So they kind of make up for it in the mid range and the different kinds of V30s you know, the China V30 is in the orange 212. The Mesa has the English V30s that are made to Mesa spec, yada, yada, yada. I could get into this and talk about this on its own episode as it is, but we're not gonna do that. But I will just say uh, both because they're both awesome. But uh, currently I am touring and playing uh, an orange rocker verb into an orange 212 and, and enjoying it very much. So uh, yeah, try one out, see for yourself. And now, Fluff reads a tweet. Isn't all skiing technically water skiing? Suggestion of the week. My suggestion to you this week is to check out this amazing video from Polyphonic, go figure. It's every suggestion of the week these days, but the videos are so good. This is a breakdown on the Beach Boys classic, Good Vibrations. I was a massive, massive Beach Boys fan as a little boy. I am still a huge Beach Boys fan, and Brian Wilson's songwriting has yet to be matched in my opinion, and this is an amazing breakdown, technically speaking, of the song Good Vibrations, and it's just an educational masterclass in how to write a song. All the big links down below in the description. You have been wonderful, I have been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.